Hey guys, I am finally getting around to recording my gouache book sketch tour. I'm so sorry it took me this long, um, but let's just jump right into it. <laughs> so this is a typical um, moleskin watercolor sketchbook. Uh, they call it the large size and it's five by eight inches around there. Um, obviously that's a Wish sticker who I just love. I always put at least one sticker on each one so I can really quickly remember which sketchbook is which. Um, I have a couple sticky notes in here from when I first started the sketchbook which uh, was for the Nathan Falk Schoolism Landscape Sketching course and uh, I mentioned that in previous videos but this was a lot of the homework assignments which is what most of the sketchbook was filled with. So it started off with um, study value studies and color studies. So a lot of these first pages that I'm going to show you are based on that. And the whole sketchbook was painted with these colors. So just the primary red, blue, yellow, and black and white. So I left them there as a reminder that everything you see was created with that. <laughs> And I also used this larger flat wash brush. So even though these are tiny paintings, one of Nathan's uh, recommendations was using a really large brush. So it forces you to see the whole picture um, from the beginning of the painting and not get bogged down by little details. So anyways, let's just jump into the art. And he had us um, choose master paintings or paintings by artists that we just love and use them as references for these first few homework assignments. So lots of these are artists that I've been following for a long time and basically he just wanted us to do a value study and a color study using the primary colors only. It was a really good way to start my gouache, my serious gouache journey. After I flip through the sketchbook, I'll give you a couple close-ups of each page, or at least most of the pages. Um, so you can see the textures and stuff, but we'll just quickly go through so you can get an overall view of the whole thing, of the paintings. These are when I just started branching off into my own practice um, and I was, it was winter and so I was very heavily influenced by the landscapes outside and was a kind of obsessed with snow at the time, <laughs> as you can see. Lots of snow pages. Um, the reason this sketchbook looks so clean and tidy is because I used the blue painter's tape to tape off every single page, just depending on what size I was working with. And it kind of became addicting like I really love how clean it looks and so it's so easy to just tape it off and even though it might look really messy while I'm painting as soon as you peel that tape off you're just like left with this beautiful clean look and it just makes the whole sketchbook look cohesive A couple of these I have videos for so if you want to check out how I painted these you can look at some of my previous videos. And I also painted quite a few of these live on my Twitch channel. And lots of these are inspired by my own reference photos that I've taken around Scotland and Colorado. And that's our last page. Now I'll show you guys a close-up of these pages so you can get an idea of how textured they are. And also it's just really interesting to see 
how they are so wild up close. But when you back up a little bit, everything just kind of comes together and suddenly you're looking at a landscape. I remember doing these little guys and thinking, okay, I'm using this giant brush, this is just crazy. But it really forced me to get um, very creative and be more resourceful with my mark making. And now when I'm doing gouache paintings, I almost always use a bigger flat brush to start off at least. These tree ones were very tricky. So much going on in such a little space. larger black and white ones were painted outside as part of the homework assignment. That was one of the things he wanted us to do. And this boat one was really difficult because it was moving, so I had very little time. I think, yeah, this is the point where I stopped the class, or the class finished, and I went off on my own thing. So I just continued doing a lot of the things that I learned in the class. Painting both plein air and from my own reference photos, or like a photo someone sent me. Um, like when I'm streaming on Twitch, sometimes I'll be like, hey guys, give me a photo to paint. <laughs> snowy ones were really fun. I was obsessed with snow and I just painted a ton of them. Snow is always challenging because it reflects a lot of color. Doing value studies before the color study is now um, something that I do for all my commissions and personal work. And it really has helped me. In the early phases of a project. Especially because it's just, you don't have to think like once you get your composition right and your values right, the rest is just fun. <laughs> Don't have to worry about whether it's good or not. I mean, in terms of like your original concept working. So once you nail that value sketch in the beginning, you can just trust yourself to run with it. It's a double page. Towards the end of the sketchbook, I was doing more videos. So a bunch of these are available as videos on my channel. And you can watch the process. I think several of these pages I painted on my Twitch channel.
a little dark. <laughs> Some of these I was really trying to push those values, those dark values, because I tend to go pretty light. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I showed this before, but this is a salt wash with gouache. Salt wash gouache. <laughs> and it is quite textured. And it was the first time I had tried it, so that was cool. I have painted this one several times with watercolor, gouache, different sizes. This one was so hard, painting the light coming through the stream. <laughs> I think I worked on that one for ages and I was finally just like, all right, enough. Thank you guys for joining me for my sketchbook tour. What do you think, Vader? 